Hi guys, welcome, welcome. We're just about to get started. We're gonna let everybody get into the session um, and see if anybody else is trying to pop in. My name is Sarah Kidwell and I am one of the Education Abroad Advisors here at the University of Alabama. And today here with us, we have ASA, um, we have Mary Meadows and Elena who are presenting about um, their provider and what kind of programs are available to you. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, there's gonna be about a five to 10 minute presentation about ASA and what they can offer and then plenty of times for questions and answers. Um, and then you're welcome to unmute yourself or show your video, but this will be um, recorded to be uploaded to our website for future use. So just keep that in mind. All right. And Mary, if you're ready, you're welcome to go ahead and get started. Okay. So a little bit about ASA. Um, as you can see, these are all the different countries and cities where we offer programs. Uh, they're mostly offered in Western Europe and also um, Central and South America. Uh, we have been around for a little over 20 years now, um, and mostly students, from what we've heard, appreciate our uh, group sizes um, being manageable, um, especially when going on excursions, um, that they're able to make great friends within the group. Um, but then also we set up groups ahead of time on Facebook and other social media so you can connect with students who are not only studying at your location, but also um, in other places in Europe, if you're in Europe or in South and Central America, if you're studying there for that term. Um, so you have some people that you can go ahead and reach out to and travel on the weekends and meet up with them as well. Um, so I'm gonna hop into pointing out a few, one of the questions that I always get is, what are your most popular programs? Um, and by and large, not just with ASA, but throughout um, the world of study abroad that is out there, Italy is definitely one of the most popular location that students are choosing to go to. Um, and here's just a few of the locations that ASA offers. Um, and one of my favorites, although I do love all of our programs, um, I just absolutely love the location of uh, Sorrento. And so you can see in the big picture, um, it's actually the bay in Sorrento. And Sorrento is close down to Naples. Um, and it's a wonderful location with uh, a good program as well for marine biology. Um, a lot of people might not think about that when they think about Italy, um, but there is a great program that is offered there. Um, they also have opportunities for internships as well. Um, so really, what is my favorite program or what the most popular location is may not necessarily be what the best program is going to be for you. Um, but we want to talk to you about what some of your interests are, not only with classes, but also outside the classroom as well, to kind of figure that out for you. Uh, some of the other locations where we offer programs that have been popular are in France, um, the Netherlands, and also in Ireland. Um, we have several different institutions that are offered in France both in the south of France, in Aix-en-Provence, and then also the ever-famous Paris is available. Um, and we have several different institutions that are available there as well. And uh, Maastricht University is a fairly new program for ASA that we're offering. The university itself has been around um, for many years, but it is a fairly new program for S ASA, but it's also been really popular with students um, in the courses that are offered in the experiences that students have had in the Netherlands. They've all really enjoyed their time there. Um, and in Ireland, we've got our programs at Maynooth University and then also Griffith College. 
um, two distinct institutions that offer different classes. So depending on what courses you're looking for will help you to determine which program might be available there for you. But also, a lot of students want to know and take into consideration what is happening the time of year um, in the semester that they're thinking about going abroad. Um, I have a lot of students who get excited about celebrating St. Patrick's Day in Ireland. And so, you know, also looking at different holidays and celebrations that are happening around the world um, at our different locations that you might want to be participating in will help you as well to find the right location for yourself. So we've had um, these pictures here from uh, some of our London students. Actually, two ladies are also from University of Alabama. Um, so some of our alumni, Amy and Shannon, um, went abroad with us to London um, and participated in our program at London South Bank University and had a great time. And one of those alumni also came back and participated as a jet setter for ASA, um, helping to recruit students um, to go on ASA programs at the University of Alabama. And we also have programs that are in Oxford at Oxford Brooks University. And a lot of students don't know, but um, Oxford Brooks University was actually ranked higher um, than Oxford University itself for its history program. Um, so that's a fun fact about our program at Oxford. And then in Cambridge, we're with Anglia Ruskin and they have some really unique programs uh, surrounding music, music technology, um, performance, as well as a lot of sciences and some of those STEM programs that are available out there. So a lot of students want to know if they're learning Spanish, should they go to Spain or should they go to South and Central America? Um, and so I do want to talk about that a little bit. Um, and some of the things that you might want to consider are the seasons and the terms and when you might be going abroad. So noticing that in South and Central America, the seasons um, will be slightly different um, and sometimes nearly opposite of what is happening here. Um, so you definitely want to look at the temperatures um, and see if that's going to be something that might affect um, your decision and whether or not you want to choose a location. Um, but also considering personal travel, uh, what a difference. Um, if you've already been to Europe, you know that you can hit a lot of different places by train and by plane and very easily around to travel to a lot of different places around Europe. Um, but you can also do a lot of travel in South and Central America. Um, I find that a lot of students who choose to go to Argentina just love to explore Argentina itself. There is so much to see and enjoy and so many different parts of Argentina. Um, just to give you an example, the pictures that you're seeing here, um, they're both from Argentina. So you have the big city, but then you also have uh, one of our students' favorite trips to do on their own is out to the Salt Flats. Um, and so, just a big contrast in what you can experience in one country. So I wanted to put out this to give you an idea of what all of the programs are that actually are available in Barcelona. We definitely understand that it can be overwhelming to try to figure out what school is going to be the right one for you. Um, and so we definitely want to have that conversation with you and the place that might be right for you may not have been, may not have been the one that a friend had recommended. Um, so we definitely want to explore all of your options and figure out what's going to be best for you. Um, and a lot of times it's also going to come down to what your GPA is. Um, so for ASA's programs, if you have a 3.0 or higher, Basically, you're good to go. Um, you could do any of our programs based off of GPA alone. Um, and then if you have a GPA that is between a 2.5 or 3.0, you 
then some of those programs are going to be available to you and some of them may not be available to you simply because of the eligibility guidelines. Um, for students who have a GPA that is slightly below a 2.5, we there are some programs where we can consider um, you for those programs and that usually means an extra letter of recommendation and um, an essay that you would have to write. But we can work with you on all of that. We'll definitely talk to you about all of your options. So um, that is a little bit about Barcelona there, all of those different programs. Um, one of them that I do want to point out is a summer program that we offer in Barcelona. It is with ISTADE. You see it down there, the second to last program. Um, that's actually the number one business school in Spain right now. Um, and you can go there um, and you can take summer classes, um, which is a great option for a lot of students um, who are um, juniors and seniors. Um, that institution is just so incredible. I had the opportunity to go and visit. Um, you will actually do a lot of work with some of, the, if you're interested in entrepreneurship, amazing place. So they have uh, a lot of businesses that are startups that are actually on campus. And so they will work with the classrooms and with you um, to work on their research as well and, and getting their businesses started off. So, um, and that's just one of the really cool things that that institution does. So um, if you're a business school major interested, um, definitely talk to us about ISADE for the summer. It is AACSB accredited as well. So continuing on with Spain, um, we also have programs in Madrid. And um, another deciding factor when you're looking at whether a program in Spain or really any study abroad program, something that you might be interested in asking about is, um, do I have to know the language? And in Madrid, you do not have to know Spanish in order to take the classes. Um, that are offered at those institutions. Another thing you might want to consider when you're looking at different locations is the size of the city. So for some people, Madrid may just be too overwhelming. For others, they may absolutely love that around every corner there's something new for them to experience, a different cafe, um, different restaurants, and uh, amazing parks and open spaces that are there as well. Um, a third component that you definitely want to think about when you're looking at different programs are the different housing options. And those vary uh, between ASA programs, whether there's housing, uh, housing available for host families. And some locations we have residence halls. And then a lot of our programs offer apartments that are shared apartments with other ASA students. And then I offer up Sevilla, um, which is a wonderfully popular program as well. Uh, we have several different institutions there. And what you are also probably looking for are what classes can you take? So if you have particular classes that you're going to need for your major um, or your minor or just to cover some of your gen eds, we want to hear that from you. Um, and then we can help you to pinpoint again what program is going to be the best one. Um, and just something fun to talk about with Sevilla is if you're thinking about Spain, a lot of the things that people see, bullfighting, flamenco dancing, um, the foods that you hear people talking about, um, the festivals, those are all happening in Sevilla. Um, so a lot of people love to go to Sevilla. Um, the nightlife is also amazing. Um, so even though there's a medium-sized city, there's just so much going on. And it's such a wonderful city full of spirit. Um, and a, a lot of students just like going there as well. And most students, you're going to find that you can walk to all of your classes, um, depending on the institutions that you uh, are choosing to attend. So just to finish up, 
we're happy to schedule individual advising sessions with you. Um, we definitely want to talk to you about what your personal goals are um, for, you know, what you also are looking for your classes with academically. But also we want to talk to you about your future. So if we can offer up volunteer opportunities, suggestions, internships, um, we want to know what your goals are so that we can help you to find the right match um, within your program. And if you want to learn a little bit more about um, our scholarships, we offer diversity scholarships, need-based, and um, have resources for merit-based scholarships and grants as well. And you can use that URL to fill out a form. Um, it's just a basic form that'll have, you know, your name, your email address, and phone number. You can enter any questions and let us know um, when you're available for a time to talk. We can then um, set up, schedule a phone call or a Zoom meeting if you prefer. That's it for now. Happy to take any questions. And again, y'all can either drop them in the chat or unmute yourself, show your video, whatever you're most comfortable with. If we're waiting on anything, um, I will go ahead and talk then, I guess, a little bit more about our scholarships. Um, so ASA does is an affiliate with the University of Alabama. And so that means that there are specific scholarships that are available just for University of Alabama students. Um, and you can apply for those through Remind me, Sarah, are you guys doing your own applications for the affiliate scholarships? Yes. <laughs> we do have one that's a part of like our education abroad grant that we do give to certain ASA students. So if you apply for the education abroad grant, um, ASA gives us a specific amount for their students as well. Um, and then if you are interested in additional ASA scholarships, they have those as two. <laughs> Yes, so there are scholarships that ASA um, has designated specific for UA students and when you are filling out your um, applications and scholarship information for UA, you go into that pool um, and those are designated by um, the staff in the UA office. Um, we do have a diversity scholarship that um, is offered um, up to $2,000 for a semester program and up to $1,000 for a summer program. And we certainly encourage you to apply for those. And um, that information is on the ASA website. So when you do your ASA application, um, it's actually a part of our application as well. So you'll find those there. And then we just have a ton of resources uh, now about scholarships. And so when you go to our website, you can link into um, different scholarship databases and listings and uh, for all of those different options. Um, and finally, I will tell you about ASA affiliate grants. Um, actually, Elena, if you wouldn't mind popping into the chat, the affiliate grants website link. Um, so ASA offers affiliate grants every semester and they vary depending on location and semester. Um, they are unlimited. Um, so if you are interested in any of those locations, then certainly put your name, your email address in and fill that out. Um, and then you'll automatically get that grant applied to your billing statement if you go on that program. You can also use any kind of UA study abroad scholarship or grant um, towards ASA programs since they are an affiliate of ours. Yeah, we've actually had quite a few students use the presidential scholarship to go on our programs and they've had extra money to pay for their flight and then also for spending money because that is, it's such an amazing uh, scholarship that UA offers for your students. Yeah. There's also a question in the chat box. 
Do you want to read it off for me? Uh, it says, this is from Morgan. Um, it says, I guess this question is kind of for Sarah. If you happen to know, if we study abroad, do we risk losing our University of Alabama sponsored scholarships or can they be transferred towards studying abroad? So yes, they can be used towards studying abroad. Um, now there are some scholarships that depend on department approval, college approval, or their specific like housing scholarships that are um, have to be pre-approved before using. Um, the housing one typically you just kind of delay it or defer it. Um, it's just for UA housing, but for like departmental scholarships or smaller scholarships, you just have to get extra approval steps, but it's not too bad. Um, for any of the major UA scholarships, you can use those for studying abroad. And I will say, you guys are lucky that you go to UA and they allow you to do that because not every university allows you to do that. So definitely take advantage of study abroad <laughs> and use your scholarships. And as an out-of-state student, most of the time scholarships um, are your cost of attending a study abroad program through an affiliate um, can even be cheaper than a semester here at UA. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, and as an in-state student, we do offer a lot of scholarships for studying abroad if money is one of your major concerns. And one of our ASA's most affordable programs for a semester abroad is a semester in Sevilla, Spain. Um, those programs are just over $10,000 and they're also, they include your tuition, your housing. If you stay with a host family, that also includes your meals. Um, we have excursions. We do include some medical um, insurance as well. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff that is included in that. Um, and I usually get a response from students like, whoa, <laughs> that is a great, great deal for that program. And then we've got some questions, guys. Any questions about your specific majors or maybe um, locations you're really interested in? Any hard questions for her, like current travel restrictions and where you want to go and if that's allowed right now? <laughs> Does ASA provide any visa assistance? We do offer um, information, um, kind of like a, a worksheet to work through when you're filling out your visa application. We'll certainly talk to you about the requirements for what you're going to need um, and when you need to turn in documents in order to uh, make sure you're all set to go for scheduling an appointment um, and deadlines for when you would need to schedule an appointment if you have to schedule an appointment for a visa. Not all the programs require a visa. In fact, for spring 2021, many of our program locations have reduced the length of their programs um, to be under 90 days so that um, as long as the regulations stay that way, then our students will be able to enter to Europe on a tourist visa and not require, be required to obtain a visa in advance. Um, in Italy, there are options for extending out. Um, so you can add on like, there's a class that's three credits, but it's a week long class. And so that puts you over the 90 days, makes you eligible for a student visa. And then um, if you were planning to do travel after the program, then you're also able to do that. So one thing to note for programs that are under 90 days, if you're traveling to Europe, then um, you are restricted to those 90 days. You can certainly travel on the weekends um, on your own, but you would not be able to enter the country early or stay afterwards um, to do extended travel. So it has benefits. <laughs> So we have another question. Um, what do you recommend for engineering majors? Are you interested in a specific location as an engineering major and what type of engineering? Environmental engineering. Environmental. In any location. Okay. 
Um, I believe there are options for you in London um, at London South Bank University. You're certainly welcome to schedule an advising meeting with us um, and then we would ask you to send along a list of any classes that you have remaining to complete your degree or let us know that you have electives to take um, and then we can certainly look at all of our programs that offer engineering. Um, Madrid, Spain as well has some engineering classes um, that are taught in English. Um, so there are a few options for you. Um, you know, are you looking at mathematics classes that you still need to take? Um, there's a lot to, to kind of consider with classes for engineering students because not only for engineering students, but any student. We want you to be able to go abroad, but also not get behind. Um, and so that takes some planning, um, but we can certainly work through that with you. Maynooth University is another one. That's a good one for engineering majors. Yes. Um, Maynooth University has a lot of mathematics courses, physics classes. Um, they have labs as well alongside a lot of those classes that students might need labs um, with. So that's also a benefit for Maynooth University. Um, Maynooth University is in Dublin. Um, it's just about a 15 minute train ride outside of the city center. Um, but it is definitely still considered Dublin. Um, in fact, a lot of students from some of the universities that are right in the heart of Dublin will go out to Maynooth um, for the um, nightlife and things that are happening out there because it really is like a great student city um, location that's out there. Um, Maynooth University was the first institution outside the US to be ranked in the Princeton Review. Um, it's an amazing institution um, it does require you to have a higher GPA. Their campus is amazing. It really like in includes a lot of the modern looks, but also they've included the old um, structures as well are still there. So it's a really neat institution just to be a part of. So it looks like we have another question. Is there anything you would recommend for political science or international relations majors? I'm open to any location, but I love England. You can go to pretty much any of our locations in England. Um, political science and international relations majors are like some of the easiest majors to find <laughs> programs for. So really, um, it's going to be looking at specific classes um, if there is a part of the world that you're interested in focusing on, um, where your interests lie um, within some of those individual classes and the structures that are offered um, within those classrooms. Um, you might want to look at the student body um, of each of the institutions as well that are offered um, in England. So sometimes you'll be studying, um, I know like London South Bank University, it really is a great mixture of locals and international students. Um, Oxford Brookes University and also Cambridge tends to be um, a lot of local students um, being uh, local being British. <laughs> so not just from students from Oxford or, um, or Cambridge themselves. Elena, do you have anything to add about those since you do a lot of advising for England? Uh, yeah, so um, definitely one of our most popular universities that we work with in the UK is London South Bank University. Um, they do have a ton of classes, so it's likely that really any student that like any class that you want to get covered there, they most likely offer it. Um, I would say the next popular is Oxford Brooks. Um, and yeah, they're just they're great locations to um, they're great schools to check out. Um, I would say if you're definitely set on England, um, you know, go for it, but keep your mind open to other locations because those are really easy. That's a really easy major to get covered anywhere. Another thing about England is um, the three cities are also very different. 
um, besides Definitely. London, um, London South Bank University, you're right um, in the center of London, um, which is great. It's a very urban campus. Um, you would stay in a residence hall. Um, all programs in England are in residence halls, actually, for the housing. Um, and Cambridge being a much smaller city, um, as well as Oxford being a smaller city. Um, Oxford, I know, has buses that run pretty much every hour down into London. Um, so it is easy to, to travel down into the city from there. If that was something that you're concerned about or interested in. Yeah, and Cambridge is only like a 40 minute train ride. Um, and it's, it was generally cheap when I went, uh, went to visit. One of the students' favorite excursions that we do is um, out to Stonehenge. Um, so that was also one of the, the pictures. Pop back up over there for fun. Those are our University of Alabama alumni, recent alumni from London. <laughs> So Jessica said, um, I see notes that summer sessions are canceled at South Bank and Maynooth. Uh, the summer sessions were canceled only because um, the university just didn't have enough international students to run them this summer. Um, but that's referring to summer of 2020, not summer of 2021. So um, I'm sure summer of 2021 will be open again. If you're referring to our website. And ASA is off, um, you can start your application for any of the programs for spring 21, summer 21, fall 21. Um, you can actually also start your application for any time beyond that. Um, a lot of students like to just start an application and kind of see what they need um, to gather for the application. And um, we use a system called Embark. And so it's really easy when you hop in there, um, you create your account and then you'll select which city you wanna go to and that city will populate the different institutions that are in there. Um, and you can mess around and kind of see like what your GPA might be. And if it says it's too low, then you just go, okay, let me <laughs> try another one. But ideally you'll have, uh, you'll schedule a time to meet with us so that we can talk you through um, all of those eligibility requirements and get you going in the right direction so you don't get frustrated when you're in the application system itself. Um, but you can always change your mind about location um, before you submit it. Um, and also sometimes you can change your mind about your location after you submit it. So <laughs> um, we're happy to, you know, work with you as you're getting your courses approved and um, figuring out what is going to work for you. Awesome. Well, we appreciate it, Mary and Elena, um, for joining us today. Um, you can always contact them at academicstudies.com and they will be able to connect you with the correct people to answer all of your questions and definitely sign up for one of their advising sessions. Um, but we are out of time for today. So I appreciate you all for presenting. Thank you, Sarah. And yes, their email is hello at <laughs> academicstudies.com. That's cute. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.